Hey guys, the very nature of how people interact and consume media is constantly evolving. Social media platforms have securely positioned themselves as a top choice for not only entertainers, but advertisers too, to find an audience. In such a crowded space, clever thinking is necessary to capture attention. One great way I found to do that is to see the platform as not only a house for your content, but an interface to interact with. In this tutorial, we'll use some simple camera and modeling techniques to build up some videos that appear to be interacting with the interface of some popular social media platforms. Let's have a quick look at what I'm talking about and then we'll dive straight in. What if they want to look at it slow? <laughs> Let's have a slow look at what I'm talking about. Too slow. <laughs> Hey guys, like you just saw, we're going to try and make videos that look like they're passing through two separate posts within Facebook. So the first thing we need to do is set up our workspace. So we're going to end up with a square format video. So you can see I'm starting off in Photoshop here, and this is where I'm going to set up that background layer. You can see first up we've got our interface, which is a banner running straight through the center of our canvas here, and that's made up of the profile picture. You can see if I toggle this down, you can see I've got my text layer here, and I found Helvetica New worked quite nicely to replace that text. And you can see underneath that is simply a screenshot which I'm using as my base. You can see if I turn off this black layer, we've got our background texture which were on the walls in that reference video. So you can mimic this setup for any social media platform, whether that be Instagram or Twitter, and create these same videos that make it look like you're interacting between two separate posts. All right, so now that we're in cinema, first up, I'm gonna grab myself a plane. I'm gonna change my orientation here to plus Z, and this is gonna be my back wall. I'm just gonna simply copy and paste this same plane, change my orientation to plus Y, and then I'm just gonna pull this down 200 units in my viewport, because I know that'll be the base of my other plane. And then I'll slide it across 200 in Z space, and you can see we're starting to set up that backdrop for us. I'm gonna select both my planes here, move them up, and then just scale them out on their width. And nice, we're already starting to set up that back plate. Now, in my opinion, the magic to these posts is all, is all to do with what camera you use. So let's throw a camera into the scene. And I'm gonna change our projection from perspective to front. And you can see now when I look through this camera, it just gives us a frontal perspective of all our objects. We don't get any of that depth in the camera. And I'll show you why this is important in just a sec. To demonstrate what this camera is doing, let's throw a cube into our scene and we'll just move it up into the viewport here. And you can see when I move this along in our viewport, we're not getting any of its depth. We're just seeing that frontal plane. And this is gonna be really important for selling this technique. All right, this is great. We've got our background set up. We've got our camera in there, but now it's time to bring in that texture that we made earlier. So I'm just gonna make a new material in my material editor and drop that onto my background. I'm then gonna load in that image that we just built in Photoshop. All right, so there's a few things we need to change here before we can continue. Let's jump into our texture that we applied to the plane, come down to our projection here and change it to camera mapping. And this is where we're gonna drop in that frontal camera. So let's, so let's look through that frontal camera again. You can see it's still not looking quite right. You can see it's not looking quite right for us. We're a little bit distorted. There's a few more things we need to set up. So let's jump into our render settings and make sure our viewport is actually a square ratio. Now this is looking better, but it's still not quite right. When I'm looking through this frontal camera, it's still a little bit distorted. And that's a real easy fix. Let's jump back into our texture that we've applied on the plane and you can see, and you can see underneath our camera here, we've got our film aspect and our pixel aspect ratio. All we need to do is make these an even ratio and that'll square out our image on our background for us. And nice, that's looking much better. And now what we can do is grab that plane that is our floor, move it up into our viewport a bit so we can, just so we can change its position when we're in our camera. 
And now that we're in our camera, let's move it down a bit just so it's right on the base of our right on the base of our screen here. Now this texture has tiled itself all along our background here. So what I'm going to do is just turn that off so we know where to focus our attention. Perfect. You can see because of our scale here, when I'm in the viewport, things distort a little bit. So what I'm going to do is drop in another camera and just change our focal length. And this is going to be the camera I look through when I'm moving around the scene. Nice, this is looking better for us. Now what we want to do is start to build out that panel. So let's just grab ourselves a cube and I'm going to reposition this so it's on our wall. I'm going to jump into our frontal view, hit MB to reveal our textures. And then I'm just going to simply rescale this cube so it aligns with our panel on our background. So you can see I'm just scaling it up a little bit on Y and then I'll do the exact same thing on X. Sliding it over a little bit so it's right in the center. Nice, this is looking good. Let's jump over to our right view for a second so we can slide this over so it just meets with our background. And nice, now that we've built this panel, all that we have to simply do is texture it. So I'm just gonna copy this texture that we have in our background, put it onto our cube, and you can see what that's done. It's now applied at that same texture, but allowed us to push that panel and give, this a, and give us a nice extrude. Now what we can do if we like is make our cube editable. Just select our front face here and I'm going to solo that out and just apply it so our texture is only applied to that front face. I'll then make a new texture based off that white in the background of that panel and apply that to the rest of the cube. You can see in our panel hierarchy here, I just need to make sure that original texture is first so I make sure it comes up to ensure it shows over the top of that new texture we've applied. And now I can jump back into that frontal camera and you can see we're not getting any of that perspective of that panel. And this is looking great. It lo just looks like that original image we started with, but we've now got this nice panel to start playing with. Now the great thing with this technique is we only need to concentrate on the middle panel because the actual interface does the rest for us. It'll complete the top and bottom of this technique for us. So now that we've got this scene set up, the rest is just left up to our imagination. We can completely go wild with this. We've got this nice square video set up. We've got that panel extruded out of that back wall. So now it's just time to start adding some elements. And what I thought could be cool is if we had a couple of spray cans falling down from above, bouncing off this panel, rolling on the ground, completing a nice looping little animation. So let's have a look at how we might build something like that. I'm gonna load up this spray can model I have, and I've actually got this available for download. If you guys wanna head over to my website and pick it up and start having a play with it yourself. So I'm gonna copy this and take it back into our original scene. I'm just gonna scale it down in my viewport to about a scale that I'm happy with. Pull it over to that panel and this is looking nice. This is looking like a good shape to be bouncing around our scene. So now what I'm doing is just repositioning this a bit so we're right on the edge of our panel. And what I'm thinking to make of this animation, we're gonna use some dynamics to have this fall down and bounce on the panel here. So now that we've got it in a position we're happy with, let's go over to our simulation tags and apply a rigid body tag. Automatically our dynamics will be enabled and we can just hit play in our viewport here and see what happens. You can see that it just falls down and it's not bouncing off anything yet. So we need to set, so we need to set a few more things up. Let's rename our cube here to our panel and with that selected, I'm gonna come over to our simulation tags and also apply a rigid body tag, but this time I'm gonna change it to a static mesh. And now when I hit play, nothing happens. I think because we've got that spray can nicely resting on the edge there. So let's go back to frame one and I'm just gonna pull this up a little bit. Hit play again and we'll see what happens. Okay, nothing's quite happening yet. Let's move it up a little bit. We might, have to, we might have to move it over the edge a little bit more. And there we go, nice. We've now got this little animation where we're bouncing off that panel. Now this is looking nice, but what we need to do now to complete the animation is to have it bounce on the bottom of our screen. So let's rename our panels to back and floor. And with our floor selected, I'm gonna copy that same dynamics tag that we have on the panel. 
And now you can see when I hit play, we've got our spray can falling down, bouncing off that panel and landing on the floor. And this is starting to look really good for us. It's a heap of fun building up these animations, creating the illusion of passing through two separate posts. So I'm just going to move my spray can up out of viewport a bit more here, hit play. And this is starting to look really cool. I'm going to add a few more frames to our timeline here. And I might even add a little bit of extra rotation just to create a more interesting animation. And nice when that falls down, it now does a flip before resting on the floor. And this is looking pretty cool. What's great with Dynamics is just with a few simple changes, you create a whole new animation every single time. Now to complete the loop, what we're going to do is on our Dynamics tag, you can see we've got these forces. Is We've got this forces tag and we can add forces to affect the Dynamics. So what I'm going to do is grab ourselves a wind and I'm going to apply this to the force list with our force mode set to include. And let's have a look at what happens when I press play now. That wind is now blowing our spray can off the scene and this is looking great. But what I want to happen is our spray can to fall down, bounce on the ground and then the wind blow it off the scene to create a nice little loop. So let's come over to our wind speed here. I'm just going to set it at zero to start with. Come over about 60 frames, add another keyframe at zero. And then, and then we're just going to slowly ramp this up. Let's come to about 80 and we'll reset it to five. Add a keyframe and let's have a look at what we've got now. Let's jump back into our frontal camera and hit play. Nice, our camera falls down into scene. That wind slowly picks up and blows it off and this is looking great. You can see how we've now created this nice little loop that just will keep playing over and over. That wind will just blow our can off at the end. All right, you guys ask me, how do I light and texture these scenes? I do have a full lighting and rendering tutorial coming up soon, but I just wanted to give you a quick tip on what I use to get some fast feedback. So the way I do it is by using the HDR Studio Rig from Grayscale Gorilla. This is a great tool the guys over there have made, and it gives you some real fast feedback to what your scene is going to look like. Now what's great with the rig, it comes with these render presets and I've been leaning heavily on them to get some fast feedback on what my image is going to look like. You can see we've got this GI medium render setting and they go from low to high. So with this GI medium selected, I'm going to add some ambient occlusion. I'm just going to add some ambient occlusion as well. And this will start to give us a bit of an idea of what our final image is going to look like. Now the way the rig works is with HDRs and it comes with some great presets. And what we're going to do is just leave this default so you can get an idea of what it does. So I've turned my preview on and you can see this is, this is giving us a little preview of what's happening globally to our scene. This has got a nice big softbox to the left here and a little one on the right. So let's jump into our frontal camera and have a look at what that's doing for our scene. I'll turn that preview off, square off our frame here, hit play on our animation. You can see I've added another can just bouncing around our scene the same way we did that first one. Just scrubbing through here to find a frame that would be interesting. Maybe this would be cool. Let's hit render and see what we've got. You can see we're getting some great contact shadows. This is giving some real fast feedback. And it's looking really cool. Perhaps it's probably a bit dark underneath, but we can go in there and add some extra lights. But these render settings are really quick and it's a great tool. I, I encourage you guys to go and check it out and have a look. Now the last thing I thought we'd have a look at is we've seen how to make these nice big panels to bounce on. But how do we make a little thinner panel so we can pass forward and back between these posts? So let's see how we might do that. Let's throw another cube into our scene here. And I'm going to drop it as a child to our panel. Hit Shift C and type in Reset PSR. And what this is going to do is reset our position scale rotation of our new cube to the position of that panel. And now I can start to resize our new cube to, to a similar size of that panel. Copy that texture tag to our cube. This time just removing any selection so it applies to our whole cube. We'll turn our panel off, take our, take our cube out from being a child. And this time we're going to give ourselves a really low X height. Let's turn our panel back on so we can reposition our cube back to the front here. Now 
Nice, turn that panel back off. And now we've made this nice little, and now we've made this nice little shape where we can pass forward and back and look like we're passing between both posts. And this is really cool. You can see I'll jump back into my camera and hit play. I think our panel with that dynamics is affecting it here. But what we need to do is apply that dynamics also to our new little panel and I'll just enable that. Hit play again and look what we've got. These two spray cans are passing forward and back between the two posts. All right, I encourage you guys to get creative with this one. Perhaps don't just think of the panel as something to pass beyond, but perhaps maybe interact with. Maybe the like button comes pounding out of the sign there. Get creative. Anything you do, create. Make sure you share it with us. I'd love to see it. And I'll see you guys again real soon. All right.